What is going on guys? My name is Alex. Welcome back to a brand new Vegas tutorial. It is Wednesday, so that means a brand new video for you guys. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys exactly how to be an impressive video editor because I would like to show you guys other things. But as you guys clearly can hear, my my throat is still not, you know, as how it used to be. And I'm still feeling sick. I'm still just on the couch, like watching Netflix, being sick. I just hate this because <coughs> there are so many topics I want to show you guys, but I have to go outside side for this but i'm sick so i'm just deciding to I'm, all right i'm gonna just take the medications and just stay inside and just recover on its own so in this video like i've mentioned i'm gonna show you guys exactly how to become a pr uh, how to be impressive video editor so if you're excited for this tutorial make sure to smash the like button down below <coughs> <coughs> subscribe if you do and i would say let's get started obviously right after the intro Hello, I'm Gary Rebholtz, and I'm proud to introduce Vegas Pro 16. Over the past two years, we've made significant changes to Vegas Pro, and with version 16, we implement some of the features that you've told us that are most important to you. Motion tracking, along with flexible masking tool, so that for the first time, masking out a moving object or applying a video filter to obscure a moving face is easy to do right inside Vegas. What's happening guys? My name is Alex. Welcome back to a brand new Vegas 16 tutorial. It is Monday, which means a brand new video for you guys. And in this tutorial, I'm gonna cover the most requested topic ever, and that is the automatic motion tracking feature in Vegas Pro 16. We're gonna go ahead and show you guys exactly how to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna stand right here, and I'm going to lift up my hand, and we're gonna blur my hand with this automatic feature. So, I'm going to just do this and as you can see right now my hand is now blurred and if I move my hand around I don't have to do that frame by frame Vegas Pro is just automatically doing that and that's a really awesome feature that Vegas Pro is now having and I'm gonna show you guys exactly how that works how to motion track so if you guys are excited for this tutorial make sure to smash the like button down below and as usual I will catch you guys right after the intro Okay guys, now that we are in Vegas Pro 16, I have two clips that I'm going to show you guys how to make the automatic motion tracking happen. So, the first clip is basically this driving car as you can see. And what we're going to do is really simple, is we're going to make the headlights, well one of them, we're going to make them shine really bright, make that light a lot brighter. So we're going to start off with the first thing. So in previous versions, when you didn't have this feature, you had to manually do everything frame by frame. That's a really great thing that they just added this feature. So what we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to make sure that we will duplicate this clip so that we have two clips of the same one now what we're going to do is we're going to mute the lower one and then we're going to go to the video effects tab and then we're going to pick obviously the new feature which is beezer masking now we want to go ahead and pick for example this one or the circular one you can just pick any shape that you like we're gonna just pick this circle and we're gonna drag that on top of the top one now as you can see this is pretty new you want to make sure that you will mask out the thing that you want to have motion tracked so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna place our square around this light and then what you want to do i'm just gonna make this a little bit thinner then this menu is pretty new so right here you have the general options that's like you can choose the blend and everything you want to keep that on zero and then you want to click on mask one and the really cool thing is that you can obviously you know choose like the feather type and everything like that and then we're gonna click on tracking now as you can see right here it says start and that means that this plugin is gonna track the entire object that you have selected through the entire clip. If I click on start, as you can see, it is adding keyframes really, really, really fast, and that is the automatic motion tracking. Now, if that is done, it will take a few seconds. Do you see all those keyframes at the bottom? You have to imagine that without this function, you have to place 
all these keyframes one by one. That's just gonna take such a long time. So this is very, very time saving. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the opacity of the lower clip. And now we're gonna add some brightness and contrast to it so we can actually make that light light up quite a bit. So I'm gonna go to the brightness and contrast. Let's see where it is. Here it is. And we're gonna pick the default one, drag it on top of the top one. We're gonna bring up the contrast and the brightness quite a bit as you can see like that. So if I bring up the contrast as well, this is how epic it looks. And this, it looks like this light is shining really, really bright. So if I play it back, this is the end result of the automatic motion tracking feature. This looks so neat. Are you guys ready for this? Because this is just mind blowing and this is what we've come to create. As you can see guys, the difference between this and this is just amazing by just doing the automatic masking as you can see it just goes so smoothly and it looks like this car has a really bright light and that is how to use the automatic motion tracking and like i've showed you guys in the intro um, I just ha also have this part right here. I'm just going to lower the audio. I'm going to just do that for the same thing. So I'm going to cut where my hand is right there. So I'm going to cut it right here. And then if I'm going to move my hand like that, I'm going to go ahead and do it like that. So it works exactly the same. Go to the video effects tab. You want to pick Beezer Masking, pick the default one, drag it on top of the top one, lower the opacity for, for now. And then you want to go ahead and just basically simply pick the mask or the shape of the object. I'm going to put that one on my hand like this. And then I'm going to click on mask and I'm going to click on tracking. I'm gonna click on start. As you can see, it is creating keyframes right now. And once that is finished, we can just simply add a blur on it and then it will automatically follow the hand. I think this is my new favorite feature on Vegas Pro 16 because, because this feature is gonna come in so handy. So if I go ahead and do it like that, as you can see, your hand is maxed out. The only thing we need to do now is hire the opacity again, go to the video effects tab, click on Gaussian blur, pick the light blur, drag it on top of the top one. And if I play it back, as you can see, it is just now really smoothly following my hand. And that is it guys. This is how you use the automatic motion tracking feature in Vegas Pro 16. And it's just that mind blowing as you can see. Also, if I play back the car one more time, because this looks so so freaking cool and that is basically how to do it. So now that we are in Vegas Pro 16, as you can see, this is the intro that I filmed. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go from start to finish to keep the quality and make it even better, everything like that. So the first thing that you want to do is when you finished filming a video, uh, you just want to go ahead and place the SD card into your PC or laptop. You guys know how that works. But then the second thing comes up and you know, in order to be safe on every single field, what you want to do, you just want to go ahead and create a new folder onto your computer and then you want to for example call that video and then you want to first drag in the files from the sd card onto that folder and not necessarily the files from the sd card straight into vegas pro because if you for example thought like okay i need to film a few extra more shots if you didn't place your footage onto your computer first if you take out the sd card out of your laptop it will actually delete the clip out of your vegas project so what you want to do is first import all the footage from your sd card onto your computer so once that is done, you want to make sure that you will just import your footage by hitting file. And then you want to click on import. That button isn't there for nothing because obviously 90% of the people that use Vegas uh, or, you know, basically any other software, they just drag the footage from the folder into their software. But what you can do and also to prevent crashes while importing, especially when it's really heavy footage, what you can do is just hit import. And then you just want to basically select the video that you want to go ahead and import like that. Okay, the second step is once the video is in to your timeline what you want to do is always especially for gaming videos but just for other content as well you want to right click on the entire clip hit properties at the bottom and you want to check disable resample it's going to make your video look a lot smoother if you have for example certain footage such as iphone quality or just footage with like you know that's a rectangle and that doesn't fill up the entire screen you don't want to necessarily uncheck maintain aspect ratio because that's going to stretch the entire video that's maybe something you don't want so just go ahead and disable 
disable the resample, but the maintain aspect ratio is just basically optional. Okay, so the next thing that you want to do then is to get a little bit more better quality is, as you can see, the footage is looks just very, it needs to come alive a little bit more. So what we're going to do is when you hit video effects and you want to scroll down until you see the brightness and contrast, which is this one. And then you want to basically go ahead and drag on the default onto the clip. And then you just want to mess around a little bit more with the contrast, but just make it a little bit, you know, make the colors pop out a little bit more. So if you go ahead and drag the contrast a little bit to the right, as you notice how the footage actually gets like a little, you know, better contrast instead of just, you know, going from this looking like not really that special to kind of, you know, spiced up with some most importantly contrast. The brightness, you can also adjust that if it's too dark or too light, anything. I'm just going to keep that one on zero. But that's basically what you can do. Bring in a little bit more contrast. If we repeat all these steps for all the footage that we have, for example, like 10 clips, for all clips, you just want to go ahead and disable the resample and, you know, add in a little bit more brightness and contrast to it. What you want to do then is go ahead and edit your video, add in the sound effects, the music that you, that you need for your video to spice it up. And then it is time to render the video. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and select everything that we want to go ahead and render out. I'm just going to, for example, leave it at that. Then we're going to go ahead and make sure that we will hit this icon first, the project video properties. So if we hit that, you want to make sure that the template that you have selected right here is matching your render settings. So let's say that your video comes out really, really bad. What you want to do is you want to pick the pixel aspect ratio to square like that. At the bottom right here, it says resample mode. You want to put that one to disable resample. And then it's really important, the full resolution rendering quality, you want to put that one to best. That's going to make a lot of difference. And the motion blur type is going to be Gaussian and the deinterlaced method is going to be bland fields. And if you don't want to do this, you know, process all over again, just go ahead and create a template. Just give this a name, for example, render match template, for example, like that. So then we're going to go ahead and hit this diskette icon that's going to save it. Then you want to click on apply, click on OK. And now you want to go ahead and hit file. You want to go ahead and click render as. And then you want to basically, you know, select the template that you want to use. I'm just using Sony AVC slash MVC. And then I'm just going to have my standard 60 FPS template. So I'm just going to go ahead and start from scratch. So we're going to pick Internet 1920 by 1080 30p. But what's really important, guys, if you have filmed the video in 720 P, you just want to render it out in 720p because rendering it out in a higher resolution than you filmed it is not going to make the video bad. If you film the video in 480p and the quality isn't that great, don't think that you know the quality will be better when you render it out in 1080p because that's just not the case. You want to match your render settings with the settings that you filmed it. So if you filmed it in 480p, you got to obviously render it out in 480p. But this clip that we're you know, using as an example today is filmed with a camera with 1080p. 60 FPS. So that's what we're going to obviously do. So go ahead and hit the internet 1920 by 1080. Click customize template. And then you want to go ahead and adjust the settings. The frame size is obviously 1920 by 1080. That's something we don't have to adjust. But the frame ratio, you want to put that one, you want to just fill in 60. And obviously it can jump to 59 points, you know, all these digits, but it's just the same as 60 FPS. The field order is non progressive scan. The pixel aspect ratio is 1.000 zero and then the other things you want to keep that as it is then you want to go to audio make sure that you include the audio and you just want to leave all the settings how it is right here system there's nothing much to change but then really important in the project tab at the bottom right here it says video rendering quality again put this one from the standard one to best then you want to also just give this a name for example 60 fps but i'm not going to save it because i already have a 60 fps template so once you've done that just give it a name hit this diskette icon to save the template and then what you want to do then is go ahead and hit your template that you just created and then you want to basically hit render. So now that your video is finished rendering, what you want to do is you want to preview it first before you upload it because people also come to me like Alex, anytime I'm rendering a video, it comes out really bad on YouTube and then probably they will blame YouTube for this. But once you have finished exporting your video, what you want to do is go to the folder where you have located your rendered file. For example, right here, I named the intro, obviously intro. But then what you want to do is you want to just preview it, just double click on it, open it up with a media player, and then just watch the video. Just look at the quality, make it full screen, anything like that. And then just play it back with the media player and look if the quality is that great. And if the quality is bad and you upload it to YouTube, but it's already bad after you preview reviewed it, it's not the fault of YouTube. So the last thing I also want to mention is anytime people publish a video on YouTube, and if it's 1080p or 720p or even 4k, YouTube needs to process that. It's not going to be 
you know, the, the, the second after it's been public, it's not going to be the full quality. YouTube needs to post that on their servers, and that's why it takes maybe, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes until it's the quality that you just render it out. So if you say, Alex, I just finished uploading a video. The video is live on YouTube. I just, you know, I'm going to check it in about 30 seconds how the video is doing, and the quality isn't that great. It's not a problem, guys, because the video will always end up looking on YouTube how you rendered it. So, so if you finished rendering a video, it is really important to just if you published it on YouTube, just give it a little bit more time to, you know, process and then it's going to be 1080p. So guys, so these are the tips to get the best quality out of your video. That's all I have for you guys today. So I'll catch you guys tomorrow. <laughs>